Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? I hope uh, that we can get started. A very, very warm welcome from Berlin, Germany. Uh, it's really exciting to see uh, so many interested students in uh, financing uh, U.S. graduate education. And I can see that there are already a number of questions. Uh, I will answer the questions at the end of the presentation. And um, I hope that the presentation will answer many of, them qu of the questions already. But uh, feel free uh, to send uh, uh, your questions in while I'm still talking here. And uh, as you can probably see, I'm a little bit excited myself. Uh, this is a, a great honor for me to be here. And uh, it's wonderful to see all the, the names on the participants list and to see where you're all coming from. And so I was once a graduate student myself, and I'm hoping I can put you on that way uh, to the US uh, at one point. So let's get started. Um, when we are talking about graduate studies in the United States, we are talking about um, after you have finished your first degree, either at a US university already or in your home country. So um, you will find uh, the master uh, and also the PhD belong to the graduate studies in the United States. I'm not going to read out aloud everything on each slide. I'm hoping there will be enough time for you to follow that. So, but. In case um, you are having questions or if you have problems, just uh, put in uh, the information in the uh, uh, question uh, window. Um, you'll find that graduate status in the United States is a very, very flexible system. It's offering a very wide range of programs. Like there were, are a thousand university programs at the graduate level, and they had about 2.6 million students. So there is a lot of um, variety and flexibility built into the system, uh, which we I'm hoping you, you can take advantage of. Um, and also a lot of money is going there. So uh, just to make sure you're uh, uh, at the right level, uh, just to give you a few fast facts about funding for United uh, for graduate study in the United States, uh, this varies uh, quite a bit by field. The STEM fields, which are uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, um, you can see that 82% of PhD students and 55% of master students will receive some degree of funding by the US universities. Uh, this is a little bit different uh, in the humanities and social sciences, where we are talking about 56% for PhD and 41% for master students. Um, there is more funding for the pure academic programs such as chemistry, history, economics than the professional programs. Uh, regrettably, uh, business, health, law, communications receive not so much funding as uh, the other two. So, but still they are available, one has to look for them. and. Uh, it, one has to be very convincing in presenting oneself to U.S. universities. So what exactly is it that the universities are looking for? They are looking for high academic potential, for a very strong application, and for research and teaching experience. Generally, that means you'll have to apply early and you have to present yourself. You have to have a professional application and good test scores. And uh, you should always consider you applying not only for a graduate program, you're applying for a job. So uh, all put together, um, you have to make sure that this is what you uh, present to the university. Um, 
to give you a little bit of an outline on how to start with this process of finding a graduate program and also to obtaining financial aid. Education USA has put these five steps to study in the United States together and they also give you a little bit of an outline the time frame you're looking at. It's really not too early to, re to start researching uh, U.S. universities one and a half years before you in, uh, attend to start your program. Two years isn't too early. That will give you a lot of lead time to put together everything that you need and to complete your application, which should be received by the university about one year before you start. And the finance you study is, is the third part because the um, the um, step one and two are absolutely crucial to your success in obtaining financial aid for your studies. So the step three um, cannot be looked at it by in and of itself, but you have always have to consider uh, uh, step one and two, researching the options and completing the application because that will determine the outcome of the finance uh, offers you might receive for, from a U.S. university. So research your options, step one. Um, it doesn't have to be said that you really should research all possible options. Just Don't just look at one university. You should never just look and apply at one university, but you have to uh, make sure that you include as wide a range as possible and then narrowing it down to your own specialities. Um, that you have to look also to uh, to see what kind of universities are available. There are like three uh, different kinds of universities in the United States, mostly the research universities, um, doctoral universities, and master's programs uh, alone. The big research universities have the uh, largest options, the largest programs, but also um, doctoral universities that are more into teaching, uh, op uh, opportunities um, that m have a certain orientation will still offer you assistantships and professors control these assistantships. So you have to make sure while you're researching, you're researching also the professors before you finally decide on a program, make sure that you look at the professors that are offering these programs. Uh, the professor is also your supervisor in the end, because the one of the um, most important elements of your graduate study. So before you choose the program, choose the professor. Also make sure to communicate uh, with the department and school because before they receive the application, they should get to know you. It shouldn't come as a surprise when you send in the applications and they have never heard of you before. So how did you end up with them? You haven't asked them any questions. So this is a very important aspect. Um, also, questions you can uh, send uh, to the school, for example, how many international students have received funding uh, or financial assistance from you? Or what is the, the common factors that uh, international students uh, have demonstrated that have finally received financial aid? And also, you need to take the time and practice and prepare for tests because um, you all all already have other things going on. So there is time to look at these tests to become familiar with them. They do play quite a role in determining uh, what kind of assistantship you might be able to grab from a university. So I'll get into that a little bit more detail at, a, uh, at one of the next slides. But this is the kind of the, the three things and when you're looking and researching that you should consider. Um, Okay, next one. Uh, your application uh, is a real package. You have to send in a, a, a whole range of materials, uh, application forms, CV, transcripts, statement of purpose, 
recommendations. And that is also one thing when you're looking at researching uh, your options, your teacher's recommendations that you, when you're preparing this, all this, that you should uh, cultivate the uh, connections to the teachers that will eventually write your recommendation. Test scores. Um, you have to, uh, for, for research assistantships and also um, in particular teaching assistantships, your test score will play a large role, in particular in the language uh, tests, uh, to make sure the, the university can see that you are able to teach undergraduate students. So in the language test um, uh, plays um, an important um, factor uh, in, in all of this. And of course, certification of finance, because in some cases, assistantships or financial aid may come not right away, but uh, like six months or one year into your studies. So uh, you may be able to, uh, you may be able to be required to present some financial, uh, initial financial um, um, grant, uh, money uh, to, to show that you can at least afford uh, to get started. And you should always, always apply as early as possible. So when you research your options, give yourself time, make sure you, ha you have everything together at an early point. In some cases, the application to the graduate school is not necessarily the same as when you're applying also for an assistantship or for financial funding. So when you're applying for financial funding, the rest of your application should be part of that. So make sure sure uh, you have everything together and have give yourself enough time to put this um, together. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit excited and I hope you're bearing with me, but uh, that you can follow what I'm telling you here. So, Uh, now let's talk about university-based funding sources. We have uh, taken care of research and we've sent in the application. This is the kind of uh, uh, university-based funding uh, that is available and that is assistantships. These are the, uh, the, the largest uh, chunks of money that may come your way. Um, they can, uh, resistance ships are very, very competitive. It's not only that you're competing with your other in, uh, international students, but also with U.S. students that are also looking for uh, funding from the university. And assistance ships, they may be partial, they may be full, um, giving you assistance to, uh, to live and um, go to graduate school, but it's not always, um, it will depend also on the application that you put together uh, uh, that the university will decide what to give you. Research assistantships are awarded by the professors. They control this. They, uh, they also contribute to your thesis research and you would be giving research services related to the fields of study. The professors apply to outside sources like uh, foundation, agencies, etc., for funding to conduct the research and then select graduate students to assist them. And many students apply for these assistance uh, chips in order to work for their thesis. So uh, also if you have selected the professors carefully, they will uh, look have uh, programs running that are of interest to you. So make sure that uh, that, that again applies, um, the interest of the professors is important to you as well. Um, the, I already mentioned it can be partial or full, uh, it can be like a tuition waiver, a monthly stipend can be included, but that will very much uh, depend on what the university can offer you. Um, please note that uh, research assistantships are generally reserved for doctoral students. So there may be some exceptions, but so if you are uh, applying to a master's program, but are planning to eventually get your PhD, let them know that you are interested in the PhD because that may make a difference when applying for such a research scholarship. Um, teaching assistantships are um, for professors who teach uh, 
um, undergraduate classes and they select uh, uh, graduate students to assist them in, in teaching, leading discussion sections, running labs or grading assistants. And as a teaching assistant, you gain experience and build maybe your own teaching uh, skills to help you when you may become a professor one day yourself. So uh, this is always awarded with the concurrence of the graduate dean. And in particular with teaching assistantships, English language fluency is a must. So preparation for the uh, TOEFL or the IELTS uh, test is absolutely essential. Uh, Overall, um, the uh, the TOEFL and then the the, the, the tests uh, play uh, combined with your. Um, other uh, credentials, not that much uh, of a role, but it will make a difference maybe from getting uh, to help you distinguish from the next applicant. So this is not to be disregarded and uh, to taken into your account. Scholarships and fellowships. Um, well, it will depend on how the university is calling this. These are outright uh, is outright money that will be given to you for merit for your uh, for the application for the uh, academic uh, record that you have presented to the university. Tuition waivers are. Um, um, that you don't have to pay uh, for attending the university, but you may still have to uh, um, support yourself uh, with living expenses. Um, In-state tuition uh, is uh, the difference that uh, students that are already living and um, in the state and have paid taxes there, they pay a larger amount of money at public institutions. An out-of-state uh, student that also uh, can apply to students, uh, U.S. students that living in other states, and of obviously international state uh, students will normally have to pay out-of-state tuition. But as a package or as an um, incentive, uh, some universities will offer in-state tuition, which can be a lot lower than the out-of-state tuition. So this is a, a university-based funding option. What else is there? On-campus jobs. Um, uh, uh, current U.S. immigration regulations allow uh, international students to work up to 20 hours per week uh, on campus during the first year of study. Uh, under current uh, U.S. regulations, um, after your first year of study, you may apply to work off campus for up to 20 hours a week. But you should note uh, that this is no guarantee that the request will be granted. And it would also depend on how, uh, what kind of outside jobs are available and how, uh, if they are larger, uh, higher paying or not. So this is uh, still this is an option. Internships or CPT is curricular practical training. Uh, this is off campus. Um, the payment can vary very greatly. That will also depend on in which field of study you are in and can be an extremely good experience. Um, Internships and CPTs uh, may be paid, maybe not. So you um, you will certainly want to look for internships that are paid. And this is also a question that you can ask uh, the admissions office or uh, the, the department uh, if they have internship positions or know of some that are uh, paid. Um, Co-op programs, uh, they are usually off campus uh, full time and generally pay well and are a very good experience. But unfortunately, because of the regulations regarding uh, employment for international students, they are very rare. And in the, uh, and the last but not least, uh, uh, loans uh, generally require a co-signer uh, from the U.S. side when you are get, uh, trying to get a loan of, uh, in the United States to fund your studies. In some cases, universities will agree to be the co-signer and can offer you therefore um, money, but that of course will have to be paid back. What other funding sources are available here. 
the US government. Um, I'm very uh, happy to say that I'm uh, a, a uh, alumni of a US government program, the Fulbright uh, program. I was very fortunate to spend one year in the United States as a graduate student uh, with the uh, Fulbright program. And in this case, uh, the German uh, government also contributed to, uh, to a larger degree to that. But the US government also has other programs, for example, uh, the Hubert Humphrey um, scholarship program, also uh, USAID, uh, United States um, Agency for International Development has um, uh, some uh, funding uh, resources, so check into that. I already mentioned home country, and I would really much suggest contact your Education USA Center in your home countries, because they will know which funding resources might apply that are coming from your home government uh, or home country, and that would be applicable to study in the United States. Um, in Germany, we are very fortunate uh, to have a larger uh, variety uh, of such programs, and you should always check out. There may be corporations, there may be um, uh, um, your parents' uh, employers, your own employers might be willing to fund you to some extent, add a little bit into that. So this is um, a larger choice. and. Um, uh, can make a wa very valuable contribution to your study. International organizations, uh, the United Nations, um, the World Health Organization, uh, Red Cross, Red Crescent, uh, they do provide uh, financial aid in some uh, form or other. So make sure to check them out, in particular if you are going into a field uh, that is of interest of these organizations. Corporation, foundations, associations. Um, I know Microsoft has programs that uh, will contribute to study uh, programs, uh, uh, certain foundations, professional organizations. You're going into chemistry, make sure to check out the uh, chemistry uh, association or the professional association in the United States or also in your home country. There may be some uh, aid available um, that you can tap into. Um, what else? Advocacy uh, organizations um, that, uh, for example, the Association for Women in Science, uh, the, um, uh, some minority organizations may have um, money uh, available. And uh, private foundations in general, for example, uh, the Ford Foundation used to have uh, some things there um, uh, have been others. Um, um, Foundations associated with corporations uh, very often have uh, a charitable arm, so um, you can check those out. Student loans I already mentioned in connection with university funding sources, but in case the university uh, cannot offer you the loan or act as your co-signer, there may be student loans uh, either uh, that if you know somebody in the United States who is willing to be acting as your co-signer, or uh, there may be uh, loans uh, in your home country. Um, uh, I know uh, that Germany has the so-called uh, um, education credit, and which is um, without interest rates uh, that you can um, uh, tap into. So uh, uh, comparable programs um, might be available in your own countries. So. Um, once you have um received uh, you've applied to research you have applied to university and you have received some funding uh, offers from a u.s university um you should always compare i mean what is the best offer for you um if you feel comfortable to do so negotiate with your dream university. For example, if you've received a full ride from one institution and a lesser one from your dream institution, let them know 
very nicely that um, you would consider studying, but you've received a, another offer from a university. And uh, if they see a way or maybe to um, add up to, uh, to the offer they've already made, or if they know of other sources at that dream university that you might tap into. But be very, very sure to make it very nicely because um, the universities obviously know um, that you want to go, um, want to, would like to add and have more money. So the asking nicely and in a constructive way makes a big difference. And also be honest about it. Don't tell them you've received an offer from University uh, X uh, if that isn't the truth or if it's not a full right. And uh, this is, um, I mean, this can really backfire on you very badly. So this is also a question of what you feel comfortable with doing. Um, for example, you can say, currently I can't afford to attend your school. Do you have other scholarship offers I might apply to? And at the school that you're attending, if you don't uh, receive the funding uh, at the school you're going to, make sure and try again, either the next semester or the following year. Because many of the uh, financial aid things will only become available uh, after the first semester or the first year. So uh, we already mentioned this in context that you have to have certain funding available to you before you, when you are going to the United States, because uh, when the professors get to know you, that they are willing to offer you either a completely new uh, funding uh, resource or uh, um, uh, offer you additional funding. So this is uh, some question of while you're going along there. And actually, this brings me almost um, to the end uh, of my presentation. Uh, of course, I, uh, I have already seen questions. Um, Education USA State Golf um, is your resource for studying in the United States, uh, where you can also find the five steps and many of the points that I've mentioned during this presentation. And what I will do now uh, is start answering the questions that have already come up. And I can see Shika Uchuendu. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this right. And Shika is asking, does one need to write the TOEFL exam amongst other like GIE and GMAT to uh, do postgraduate studies in the United States? I studied in the United United Kingdom, uh, and but as I intend to get another degree, another master or PhD, I would like to know if I require this to apply to a US university. Well, she can, um, if you have already studied in the United Kingdom, TOEFL or IELTS may not necessarily be required. But in particular, if you're applying for a teaching assistantship, they may need to know how good your spoken English is. Uh, there used to be the test of spoken English, which I think no longer exists. But the uni US universities might decide instead to talk to you uh, via um, uh, Skype or in another format, but uh, ask them. Just send them an email and ask them if I'm applying, I have already studied in the United Kingdom, do you still need the TOEFL from me? So this is, will be up to the university. I hope this answers your question, Chica. Addie Ann is asking, Hi, I'm Ad Anne from Ghana, and I've received an email from you re concerning the online university. I've chosen business and accounting. I want to know when I can start. Well, Eddie Anne, I'm afraid I'm not quite sure uh, what you're referring to. Uh, Education USA um, is not uh, an online university or offers classes. And I'm not sure that uh, college week, uh, life uh, is, in this case, the um, the organization that offered this to you. So uh, you will have to contact the organization or the university um, 
that um, that you're um, getting this program from. So, but Education USA in Ghana could certainly help you uh, if you're still looking for the program or have questions concerning that program. Okay, and next question, Huang Nuang Ha. Hello, Huang. Um, Huang says, I love visual art, film, and photography, so I want to find a scholarship of the art universities. Can you recommend several universities and tell me how I can get scholarships from them, uh, the standards for getting a scholarship? Thank you very much. Okay, Luang, um, I already uh, we uh, mentioned in the beginning that funding uh, for uh, professional programs, including business health and unfortunately also the visual arts is few and far between. So you have to really, really pre uh, you know, research, talk to the universities in advance uh, and preparing um, your, uh, your uh, application. So each university will also have different kinds of standards. So um, make sure that you uh, talk to them, ask them what they want, what they expect to see from you if you're uh, going to uh, find some uh, financial aid. Um, this is um, really step one and two that you really need to look into very, very strongly. And there is no one program um, that uh, will fit uh, that I can tell you you will fit into because you have to discover your own strengths and weaknesses and apply to those universities accordingly. So you should certainly contact the Education USA Center in your country and see if you, I can uh, if you can make an individual appointment with them uh, so they can consult with you and uh, help you find that uh, fit. But for me to uh, from here in, within this one hour, I think will be a little bit. Uh, um, too problematic. I hope this uh, at least gets you started. Um, the Education USA advising centers can be found through Education USA State Gov. Um, just click on uh, find an advising centers and there is advising centers worldwide. We are a whole network uh, of colleagues and I'm sure that whatever country you are in, the next colleagues will be totally happy to help you with that. So next, Kingsley Chi. Let me see Kingsley. Kingsley Chi. Good day. I would like to book a graduate space in epidemiology at your university, but I really don't know much about the program and funding. Could you guide me through this? Well, uh, Kingsley, that's the thing. I'm not at a university, a specific university, and um, I can only say again, uh, talk to the Education USA advisor in your country. They will help you point out um, programs in epidemiology. Uh, to get you started, uh, Peterson's come. Um, slash Education USA, there you can search for all kinds of programs given various criteria, and you can narrow down a, a list of programs to, to get you uh, started. And for the rest, again, talk to the Education USA advisors, and they will point out, and then you will have to go through the process of you know, narrowing down your choice, applying to five to eight universities and ask them about funding and see when you have sent in the application um, if they will offer you some funding. Because again, this is tied to the um, research and the application itself. Okay. First name, last name. It only says hello. Okay, next one. Okay. I want to get a teaching qualification in the United States. I want to be able to teach in the US or other developed countries. What are the prospects over there for me? I'm a Nigerian with a law degree from Nigeria and a master's in international relations from the United Kingdom. Um, a teaching qualification. Well, um, since you already have uh, your first and second degree from uh, other countries, you may need to lo uh, look into um, 
um, oh god <laughs> i'm blanking out for a moment here uh, this is less of a, a, a study question but this will be uh, trying to get into teaching uh, like in a sideways taking some classes and uh, go through a work program i'm afraid this is not quite to place to do this um, but you can uh, send me an email at info at education usa de and i can uh, we have developed a, a sheet with some links for teachers who are interested in the united states this is more about uh, the qualifications and how to uh, get into like a little bit sideways uh, and less about studying. So this is, um, oh, you're interested in, I'm sorry, I missed part of that. You're interested in teaching special needs children. Um, yes, I think this will be relevant in the United States um, uh, because special needs uh, programs are uh, apparently looking for, or may, you may be able to find programs that are looking for special needs uh, children, and there may be uh, programs to get you into that. Um, it will be uh, less, or it will be m more valid maybe, and, and also I know, for example, that uh, some of the STEM fields are looking for uh, teachers, so uh, these are also programs that might be um, um, things to look at for teaching. So, Joseph Kalolo. Hi, Joseph. Oops, where is, I'm sorry, I'm, where, where's Joseph? Uh, hi, see, let me see. Um, Joseph, where's Joseph? Okay, sorry. Can I get a full scholarship of my, uh, my case? Uh, Joseph, now I only have to assume that you were the one asking the question uh, about teaching. So um, if, if you're studying, again, this will depend on an application to a U.S. university. But if you're going through like a work program uh, that I mentioned, um, that might be a, a way of uh, get, going to the United States through a combined study work program. But again, uh, I will send you some links and we can see uh, to get you started from there. Next one. Please, okay, please, what option is available for me to finance my education? Well, I'm sorry, but I hope that the uh, presentation has already answered most of that. Um, this is very generic and um, I cannot say for certain, um, depending on your um, on your own qualifications and the programs you're looking at, uh, if this will work out. But I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. Quader Al Zadi. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing. Uh, also, people mispronounce my own name, so I'm used to that. But. Uh, Kavather Alzadi is asking, hello, I'm asking about um, how I can offer to study for a PhD in, at a U.S. university. What is the first steps to do and to get accepted? How do I get financial offers and help from the university? And can you give me names of university for PhD programs in math? Okay, the presentation should have told you step one, two, and then financing your studies as step three. Um, um, math programs, again, look at, for example, Peterson's com slash education USA and go to or contact your closest education USA center. They will have a whole range of um, 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 study guides or study books that you that will give an overview of the programs available in the United States and they will be able to help you narrow it down to certain programs and then you have to apply and see um, which programs are the best uh, fit for you and who will offer you that uh, put um, uh, money that will enable you to finally to go Okay, next one. 
we are t uh, taught in English language. Do I still need to take uh, do test score? If you're talking about the TOEFL or the IELTS test, that will depend a little bit on the university and also in particular if you're wishing to teach in English. Um, knowledge of uh, English itself is not a, uh, necessarily a good way to determine if a person is also able to to speak fluently, to give presentations. So ask the universities uh, what their criteria are. I'm not really um, in a position to uh, to say that for each and every single universities. But also consider, uh, while you're applying to three to five to eight maybe universities in the United States, to give you a wider range, uh, two may say you don't, or three may say you don't need to take the uh, TOEFL test. But the other three will require it. And to give you a, a good range of offers from, from U.S. universities, you may want to consider um, taking uh, the test, uh, English test um, anyway. Um, if, of course, every university or most of the universities are telling you, you know, you don't need um, uh, the English test, um, then uh, you will uh, you don't have to take it. So this is my best recommendation. Okay, I think Kvather is, Kvather is asking again. Um, I need some about, I'm afraid Kvather, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. I need some about all answer. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not quite sure what you're asking, Kavada. Can you please uh, rephrase the question? Um, I have to say English is not my first language either, and sometimes I'm not able to guess uh, what, when, when a native speaker might, so I apologize for that. Jachen Xiao is asking, how many chances are waiting uh, are there for students to get into universities? Actually, you know, with the range of programs that we've mentioned, more than a thousand graduate programs in the United States, I would say your chances are very pretty good. I mean, really. So the, the key really is researching and applying to those universities, making sure you're not locking yourself into a choice very early on and making sure to communicate with the particular universities. Because as more as you communicate, the more the uh, universities get to know you, the more they will be willing to, to, uh, to accept you. So this is a, really a key thing for you um, to, 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 to do. So a, in general, chances are really good. I think there were some numbers, um, um, how many universities, uh, um, how many students are receiving funding. And you saw at the very beginning there are uh, up to 82% of PhD students get funding from the university, so in the STEM fields, and uh, more than half in, in other fields. So really, um, if you're um, going through this, I, I, I'm confident you will be able to find something. Again, um, this will rise by field, and uh, you may have to range widely and make sure to include everything, but I'm sure there will be something um, that you can find. And I'm, as I, again, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for all of you out there, so because I managed to do it, and I was so happy about it, and it really changed my life so much. So again no name given i have a professional education from my country what course can i enroll for well the, the question is more what do you want to achieve what do we want to get out of it so uh, do you want just to further your education and come back to your home country and work in that field so what is a potential employer in your home country looking for or do you plan um, to get a PhD? You have a professional qualification and plan a PhD and uh, work with the U.S. universities. This is a question that I cannot answer for you. So it will very much depend on your field 
and what you want to achieve with it. And then when you're presenting that application to the U.S. university, you will have to stress for them that you're applying to that program to achieve this very particular object. But having this professional qualification also may uh, maybe a very good um, a point for you, a strong point in terms of your own experiences, uh, because that will make you more valuable to the department that you are already applying to, You because you are bringing this wider range of experience to that university that may be valuable for their undergraduates or their, um, when you're, if you're doing a teaching or the experience that you bring from your own country. Um, um, in in a um, for for the research, so the the U.S. universities are looking for uh, some teaching experience, some personal experience, a well-rounded personality, and that is not shy retiring because you are essentially applying for a job at that university, and uh, this professional experience will will be uh, put you in good standing. So again, make sure. What do you want to get out of it? Arezeki Chiakawe. I'm again. Hello, I'm looking for pursuing my PhD studies in the United States. Again, this is very generic, and I'm hoping that my presentation has already answered all of that for you. Um, I think I've covered it in the past. Um, uh, questions and if you have some more detailed question uh, again education usa is uh, standing by to help you uh, with further details joseph calaco calaco again dear officer oh no joseph i'm not an officer i'm just an, an employee uh, in the public affairs section, and my uh, because I have studied in the United States, I'm uh, working uh, for and with Education USA. So um, I'm just a person, almost like you are out there, and I'm hoping uh, you get the same chance that I did. So I'm 20 years. I'm living in Tanzania, and I did a secondary and graduated from a high school from Loyola High School, I don't know, uh, in Tanzania, and you have a certificate in computer science. And let me see, this is a bit longer, so I can't see everything. Um, and you are uh, proceeding with a uh, diploma in uh, computer science in Dar es Salaam. You have two years of study at the diploma school uh, in computer science, and um, you're looking for a particular institution in the United States uh, for computer. Um, Joseph, this is really up to that institution that you are applying to. Um, you're saying you have a secondary education and you have a two-year certificate from your home country. Well, uh, graduate studies is actually after the fourth year after finishing your bachelor degree. It will be up to determine uh, to the institute or in where you're applying to uh, to say, well, your studies from um, Tanzania are uh, uh, at the same level as a bachelor's degree in the United States. It sounds to me that with only a two-year education, you may be more as an associate degree level and that you may still need to take um, additional classes to have uh, the equivalent of a bachelor's degree. Again, I'm not the person to determine this. This is really up to the institution, to their uh, admissions office. And uh, you, when you're sending in your application, make sure to stress every single course you've taken. But in, in the end, um, they will say um, if they will accept you or not and at what, uh, what they require for you to at which level they will accept you um, don't be disheartened um, you I mean I don't know the reason why you've chosen this particular institution but um, there are other institutions out there if you're absolutely interested in going to one institution which is really um, you know um, 
taking away some of your options. Um, but if you really set for a particular reason to go to these institutions, you will have to abide by the um, by the decision that this institution makes. So we have no influence. But make sure to work uh, with the Education USA Center in your own country because they can help you, you know, strengthen your application, making sure everything is included and may be able to contact um, um, the institute where you're applying to to make sure that everything and everything you've done uh, is considered and factored into that decision. Okay, I'm hoping I have uh, answered that. And as I said, uh, Education USA State Golf uh, is the place to go to find your Education USA Center. Okay. Good luck, Joseph. I really hope you'll make it. Sun. Oops. Oh, I, I, I pressed the wrong button here. I apologize. Um, how uh, to do student loans is a uh, son no go is asking about student loans um, generally um, student loans will depend on if they are uh, coming from your home country that will depend on the uh, laws and um, regulations in your home country what requirements they do um, you are, if you're trying to get a loan from the uh, from a US organization, they will usually require a co-signer, uh, an American citizen or permanent resident in the United States um, that will uh, agree to take over in case you're not able to to pay off that loan. Um, Again, I already mentioned that some universities, as part of the package, will agree to become a co-signer. But this will de very much depend on the individual institution. So uh, Education USA State Gov, you will find uh, a few links um, when you're looking for financing your graduate studies about loans. They have uh, three links to uh, loan organizations in the United States and, and a little bit of additional information for you to look into. Hope um, this answers the question. Cornelius Wong is asking, oh, again, I'm pressing the wrong button here. Uh, can I do work and study during my degree study? What's the term? Uh, yes, Cornelius, you can work up to 20 hours on campus during the first year. That is, the, the laws and regulations, uh, immigration laws uh, in the United States are very strict about that. So uh, the work on campus is generally low paying. Um, this is... Um, it won't be enough to finance uh, your study that may be uh, good for uh, um, uh, su supplementing your stipend or um, living expenses. You may be able to buy your books from that. Uh, and it will also very much depend on this uh, university in question what they can offer you. But during the first year, it's on campus only. So this is something to, to speak about with uh, the department that you're applying to. Uh, the second year, you may apply to work off campus. Um, you will have to get a permission to do so. And that will also require that you are a student in good standing. That means that your academic, uh, that your grades are up to par, that you can um, really f do everything that is required um, and not, you know, uh, lose um, your, your grade point average. Um, you may have to maintain that. Um, so that can be a good option. It will also very much depend in uh, what field you are studying. In the STEM field, it may be uh, easier or in, in certain social science humanities parts uh, to find a job than it may be um, with some of the professional programs. This is uh, not something that I can um, um, answer uh, overall. But in generally, it is permitted. But uh, also, one thing to note: for uh, if you ha uh, are not receiving an assistantship or sufficient funding, 
um, you cannot say I'm going to work in the United States and uh, apply this to as to finance your study. This can only be a supplementary thing. Um, you have to pr uh, show proof of um, financial uh, enough fin uh, financial um, resources when you are applying for your visa. Oops, okay. Cornelius was the next one. Is oops. Sorry. Scroll button here. Aris Areski Chekwau. I want to know whether I could have someone to help me for for financing my studies in the U.S. Again, Education USA is there to help. Contact your closest Education USA center, and they can help you with the research and the application. Um, how to narrow it down to the programs, but the U.S. universities will decide by themselves whether or not they will give you some financial aid. Uh, and again, I we have uh, in my presentation I have listed other uh, resources: uh, home country, the U.S. government with the Fulbright program, for example. There may be other scholarships from foundations and things. Which ones apply in your country? Education USA really um, um, has usually a list or a, a, a information ready for you to look at what applies to your particular country so uh, but again the decision about assistance ships and university based funding is coming from the university and will depend on the application that you have sent to them so make sure um, to do this I'm already getting a five minute warning so I'm trying to uh, get into more questions um, so we can and Karwada uh, Alzadi is asking when are you um, uh, they're asking if this will be repeated, I think. Um, I think uh, Education USA has done a virtual college fair last year, and I know College Week Live also has international students day on a regular basis. So watch out both at Education USA State Golf and at College Week Live for International Students Day, where we will give presentations. It may be somebody else, uh, probably will be somebody else. There are so many nice Education USA colleges colleagues and universities out there that will love to assist you in, in getting your questions answered. And thank you for your nice um, greeting here. And Midra Tatra Misra, I'm working at Atlanta with the H-1B visa and would like to be eligible for in-state tuition fees in Georgia. Um, and this is something that you would have to check with Georgia. Um, normally, only uh, permanent residents or uh, U.S. citizens are eligible, uh, and only after the, or after they've lived in that uh, state for three to five years. But I think that will rise by state. So make sure you check out um, with the institution what the requirements are for that. And also, you may be offered it is uh, with the, if your application is good enough, they may offer it to you that you pay the in-state tuition uh, instead of the, the out-of-state tuition. That will be uh, depend uh, on what uh, uh, this institution can offer you. And um, Shrikant Bade, kindly tell me, how do I find fully funded courses for instrumentation? I'm afraid the fine arts, performing arts are very difficult. Uh, it's, it will be a long haul. It will be a long search for uh, in, uh, funded uh, courses or support uh, for that. Um, off the top of my head, of course, I don't know them. I mean, we're talking a thousand uh, um, um, uh, graduate programs of a particular fund for instrumentation, check with the Education USA centers. They can at least help you find who offers such classes. And I think I'm almost two, two minutes to go, so I, I'm, I can take I'm one or two more questions. And um, Iman Mohammadi is asking, is there any foundation that does both the applying and funding process for applicants like DID does in Germany? Um, 
there are commercial organizations out there that may uh, do or help you with ap uh, applying to U.S. universities. But it won't, you know, it doesn't, in particular, when applying to graduate programs, um, you are really very well advised uh, to to do your own application and um, uh, applying to U.S. institutions and trying to get their funding from them. If there are foundations in your home country that will give you um, funding and that might assist you with applying uh, to the uh, U.S. institutions, I don't know. But even the DRD requires students to apply programs in the U.S. and will make the funding dependent on the acceptance of the applicant uh, to that program. So this isn't quite as easy or, um, you know, there is no, uh, you go to one uh, organization and then they will uh, do everything for you. I'm afraid the, the researching and uh, application process is really uh, key um, to applying to essentially a job in the United States. So. Okay, and one more, then then Danielle Giles. Um, I want to stand in the United States. Oh, again, shipping and logistics. Asking for a particular program. Obviously, this is something I can't do here right now. Check with Education USA, and the first uh, you can um, Petersons come slash Education USA. Uh, you can get started narrowing it down, and the Education USA advisor will be able to help you out. I'm afraid this is the last question that I can take here today. Um, I hope I've given you a good introduction into the topic, get you started. Look at Education USA and uh, the five steps to study, and I think you are on a good way. And the Education USA advisors in your home countries will help you out um, for detailed things. And I really, really, in Germany, we don't cross our fingers here. Let me see. We press our thumbs for luck. And I'm pressing my both my thumbs for all out of you there that you'll get to go to the United States and that you get a very well-funded program there. So best of luck to all of you. And um, please go ahead and do this. It's a really wonderful, wonderful experience. So.